do you like it? Oh, it's nice. Please go with it. Yeah, simple yet, yet, yet tasteful, darling. Mm -hmm. They say pearls look best with basic black. What is? They say something else about pearls and swine. What is that? As a I... matter of fact. Well, all your shopping wasn't frivolous. The girl has to think about her future. <laughs> Pork belly futures. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. It, pork belly futures aren't going to guarantee your future. Did you come over here to spoil my celebration? Because let me tell you something. Even after buying all of these things and putting a down payment on a custom rolls, I have plenty of money left over from what we got from CC for that serum. It'll last you at least six months. You go ahead and play Scrooge if you want to. I mean, you can hoard your share. You might as well add this to it. Oh, a gift certificate. And I gave up double cheeseburgers. Yeah, it's uh, five sessions of psychotherapy prepaid. But oh. I doubt it'll do you any good. Darling, you don't want me normal. Just think of all the fun we've missed. It's, well, what do you know? Toddlers, Inc. must have placed a happy baby in a happy home someplace. Your first commission check. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, a few days ago, this would have seemed like a nice chunk of money, but... Well, after the million and a half score we got from Cece, this is very anticlimactic. Though I guess it's not so bad if you think about it coming in week in and week out. I just hope it's enough to cover the bail. There's no way they can connect us to that stolen city. <sighs> I'm not talking about that. It's toddlers... You know, they're gonna nail me to the wall if these people are selling babies. Why didn't you lie down for a while? Jeffrey, I don't need to lie down. Please. Kelly, you've been pushing yourself like a mad person for three days now. I, and first we run out of water, and when we finally get back on the road, it's nothing but, but heat and, and, and one dead end after another. Jeffrey, I'm fine. And I'm not going to lie down in the middle of the day when we could be looking for Mason. Wait, wait, there's nothing to stop us from looking for him after you've had a Jeffrey, chance to Jeffrey, I don't want to argue about it. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how hard it is. I intend to find him. I am not arguing with you about this. I want to find him as well, okay? I'm, I'm sorry. I guess I'm the one that's frustrated here. At least we've eliminated a lot of territory. Yeah, yeah. I mean, without speaking to one person who's seen him or his car. I mean, we don't even know if he's run off by himself or, or, or if he's in some kind of trouble or what. I, I, I just wish, I just wish we knew what we were up against here. We'll scrap the idea of passing ourselves off as a married couple. Don't be ridiculous. There are couples and there are couples. And some of the happiest ones I know are as living proof of the age-old maxim. What's that? Opposite attract. Oh, 
this is unbelievable. A couple of kids shoot off some fireworks early, and we dive for cover like it's World War III. Yeah, I forgot how close it was to the Fourth of July. I'm glad I'm not the only paranoid on the beach. Well, you can't expect all that law enforcement training not to have had some effect. Oh, it really sounded like the real thing. Yeah, well, I doubt anybody's going to open fire on us here on Santa Barbara Beach. Oh, well, you can't be too cautious. I don't think it was a bunch of kids that burst into your house and trashed it last night. Yeah, you got sand on your nose, Aaron. Listen, um, we better we better hit the road if we're going to be on time for our next next appointment. Got you uh, get your stuff there. Right. solid yet at all uh he uh no no but i uh, i do appreciate it uh now there's absolutely nothing you can do there's nothing new all right uh, yeah i'm fine yeah okay thanks bye, -bye. another offer uh he was just uh, an old friend of mine he was out of town and he uh he didn't hear about johnny till this morning saying that there wasn't any, any news. So I was hoping that television appeal that you made would, would bring in some relief. Yeah, well, it, we guess we all hope for it, but I guess it just didn't work out, right? Well, you never know. There's still a chance that someone may... Uh, Jane, it's been two days, all right? If someone would have called, they would have called by now. It's... I'm saying is that Johnny, much more, many people know about Johnny now. Now, if someone who sees him, they'll recognize him and they'll call. Yeah, all right, fine. And for now, the police are working on it. I've got Cruz working on it, and he's the best. So it's just a matter of time, all right? They'll find him or they'll find out what happened to him. And then... Rick, I know you're going through a horrible time, but you can't even begin to think like that, okay? You're going to find Johnny. You can't give up hope. On a hope, but I do believe we'll find him. Okay? Well, I, I, I did do something. What? Well, um, I took that flyer with Johnny's picture to all the pediatricians in the area. Now, if someone brings him in, then maybe a doctor will recognize him and, and tell us. So, so, so what if he's, uh, if he went to a doctor, then he's, then he's sick, right? What, no, what, I was, what you, I was you, trying you, to cover... What are you doing to me right now? Do you understand? The last thing I want to think about is him being sick. What, do you think that they're so stupid they're going to go to a doctor? Rick, I'm Where are you, sorry. What are you thinking? Look, I know you're... All right, you're trying to help, all right? It might help. I don't know if it will. Who knows? I understand. Okay, I don't ask me to be rational now, please, all right? Look, we've covered everything up to here. All we have to do is cover these few five cities up into this county. Yeah, and those five little cities cover a lot of ground. Which is why we can't waste any time, Jeffrey. Uh, i better check how much petrol we got in the van, I guess. And water. Yeah, but don't worry, I learned my lesson the hard way the last time. Look, we should probably have enough time. We'll check the bars in this town and the next one between today and tonight. Uh, well, that should mean we should be up till two in the morning. If we don't find him, we'd start for Tucson the first thing tomorrow. Okay, look, also we should get hold of Victoria, just in case Mason happened to call and check in. Yeah, 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 good idea. And, and maybe his office, we should call his office, too. Oh, I can't do any harm. Yeah, you do that, do that. What? Look, I, I haven't, I haven't wanted to bring this up before, but I don't want to discourage you, Well, Kelly, Jeffrey, you I... can't discourage me. I refuse to be discouraged. If you're suggesting that we turn around and no, go back... No, no, I'm not. Look, I want very much to find Mason. I'm willing to turn the entire Southwest upside down to do that. 
But I think we should start facing the fact that sooner or later we may need to bring someone else in on we this. We don't need anyone else. Uh, Kelly, we're not professionals at this. Now, I, I know, I know how carefully you've planned this search, and I admire that. Uh, who knows what we may have overlooked here? We're going to find him, Jeffrey, on our own. Okay, listen to me, listen to me. Whoever lured Mason out of here is probably, probably the same person who was making those sicko phone calls. Now look, when we're dealing with someone like this, we have no idea what may have happened. Nothing's ha nothing has happened. But I know, I know, I don't want to think about it either, but there is the possibility. There is the possibility that when and if we find Mason, that it may be too late. No, Jeffrey, it's not going to be too late. And we're not letting anyone else in on this. No way. When he called Mason, he told him he was going to endanger Eden's life if he, if he didn't keep quiet about it. I'm not pushing that any farther. If you're tired and you can't go on, I understand. No, no, that's no, no, I understand. Go home if you need to. But I'm staying. It's going fishing. Toddlers, Inc. decided to dump its business in the Midwest and move out to Santa Barbara. Did you notice oh, how sudden the move was? Oh, come on, darling. You've been hanging around me long enough to realize how suddenly life can change. Uh, su uh, suppose Marcia Connors decided all of a sudden to move to Santa Barbara. Even if I do buy that, the way they handle money is weird. There's nothing weird about money. They keep all their assets extremely liquid, darling. I think that's a good idea. That's exactly the point. I mean, would, would you... Trust a company that resorted to the kind of financial arrangements that you subscribe to? Well, Come on! I don't care. As long as it's all legal. What are you getting all bent out of shape about? Because I am involved with these people. So? The file that you got from your own office says these people have been in business for a long time, Keith. I mean, if they were doing something wrong, I'm sure someone would have found out about it by now and complimented. I mean, look at what happens these days. The president can't even make the shadiest little deal. Now you think I'm being too cautious? Of course, you're acting like an old lady. You're being absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you don't mind stealing a, a million and a half dollars from Cece for that stolen serum, but you're worried about some company and the way they're keeping their books that you're filing the even pe The it. people may be selling children. I mean, I would toss C.C. out on the street and take his last dime, but I have to draw the line someplace, and I will not sell children. They're obviously arranging adoptions. Oh. And very successfully. This way, the mothers get some money, and the babies get rich parents. It's great. Go out and spend your share. Yeah, right. I mean, like I'm going to catch up to you. <laughs> no, I'm never going to let you catch up to me, sweetheart. Well, this is odd. What? I never bought any jewelry at Stuart Jewelers. Mine. Who are you buying jewelry for? Not you. This is where I draw the line, Keith. You're not buying jewelry for other women, are you? Oh, it's okay if I love them. I just, I just have to leave them with... With them. nothing! Right. You know, they said romance was dead. You're just as bad as I am, and you know it. Well, you know, all this outpouring of honest and deep emotion leads me to believe that you're fond of me. Is that true? Of course I am. Well, would you do me a little favor? Well, that depends, huh? See, my wrists are still sore from last oh, week. Oh, not that! I... <laughs> would you apply for a job at Toddlers Incorporated, please? Oh, you're planning to fire me again? Oh, well, I don't care because I have enough Shut up money. and listen! I want you to go there, see if you can get a job, nose around, find something out, just to ease my conscience, please. No way! Oh, come on! I, I know your favors don't come free. I'll give you commission. I'll give you, um, 50% after this one. I'll tell you what. What? You give me this whole check, and we'll split it 50-50 after this one. You're all hard. So sorry, Victoria. I didn't mean to startle you like that. I was, uh, just shocked to see you when I... Got up. Thank you. Oh, God. Oh, oh, it's okay. No. It's okay. I'll clean it no, up. No, no, I will. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have nothing to be sorry about. Come on. No, I, over, I overreacted in the first place. Well, I, you know, I would never have come in, but nobody answered, and I heard the baby crying inside. I thought something was wrong. Yeah, well, I, I must have really been yeah, here you go. been out of it not to hear you knocking. Yeah, well, you were. In fact, I was trying to calm him down. I thought maybe I could do that without waking you up. But... Well, I, I, could, I could have sworn that, that I, I locked the door. 
I don't know. I, I just I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I've just been tired all the time. Well, you know, Victoria, I think there's a little bit more to it than that. No. No, no, there's nothing else. Come on, Victoria, I knew you win. You're one of the coolest ladies in Hollywood. You know, I think this mother-wife bit is really starting to take its toll on me. No, no, I, I guess I, I just have to get used to it, you know. I, I love my I love my baby very much, and, and once he starts sleeping through the night, I'll be fine. Hello. Mason. It, it's so good to hear your voice. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. He's fine, too. Well, he hasn't been sleeping through the night, but the doctor says that that's normal. Mason, where are you? Well, yeah, I understand that, but can't you leave me a number or something where you can be reached? I mean, God forbid, God forbid something should happen to the baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, honey, I, I, I have to go now. Okay? Yeah, all right. Bye. Not the best of news, huh? Um, no. Um, my husband going to be away a few more days and he's any, any, any thought. Well, that's going to leave you alone here to take care of the baby by yourself, isn't it? Well, you know, that's okay. Um, if he could come sooner, he would. A few more days is all right. No, look, look, Victoria, I think you should get out in the meantime. You should take the baby out. You should have people come in. You got to keep busy. I'll tell you what, why don't we try that photo shoot again? No, 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 really, I'm, I'm in, I look, I'm Oh, come on, Victoria, I remember you'd come to photo sessions in L.A., you come out looking beautiful, feeling great. You know, that kid of yours is going to be taking off to school before you know it. This time of his life is very special. And someday, photos are going to be the only thing that you have to look back on to remember what it was like to have him as a baby. Well, there's no question in my mind that you'd be a very good mother, Mrs. Ramirez. Oh, thank you. You have no idea how anxious my husband and I have been about this. Well... This has been a very pleasant preliminary interview. You both obviously seem like stable, responsible people. And if I may say so, you look like a perfect couple. Oh, did you hear that, darling? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. You've been so kind, Mrs. Cox. But I just wonder if we could ask you a few questions. Certainly. Since we've decided that adoption really is the answer for us, we've been very anxious to get the child. Yeah, real. that's right. You see, we understand about uh, the, the preliminary screening and the, the fees you have to charge, but we really want to know how long we're going to have to wait before we actually get the baby. Excuse me. I'm terribly sorry for interrupting, uh, but Mr. Weston would like you to call him as soon as you're finished, Mrs. Thank Cox. Thank you. Um, it's Mr. Castillo, isn't it? No, this is Mr. and Mrs. Ramirez. Ramirez? I'm sorry, I don't understand. I know I've seen your picture in the paper. I've read about all of your heroic work with the Santa Barbara Police Department. What's your name? Marsha Connors. Yes, I am, Mr. Castillo. This is my friend Eleanor Norris. Uh, she's been uh, waiting a long time to adopt a baby and having a lot of problems because she's single, and I thought maybe I could help her out. By trying to adopt under an alias? Mr. Castillo, this never would have gone beyond the preliminary interview. The, the research that we do on parents is extremely thorough. Well, you know, it's really all my fault. I thought that if I could just get in the door, I would be able to convince you that I can handle the child on my own. Miss Norris, I'm terribly sorry, but we have an unwavering policy of adoptions to married couples only. Now, I, I understand and I sympathize with your desire. Look, perhaps if you call me later this afternoon, I could give you the name of some agencies that allow single-parent adoptions. Oh, that's very kind of you. So sorry to have wasted your time. No, no, that's... It's quite all right, and I really do understand why you'd go to such drastic measures, but I really think that, in the long run, an honest, straightforward approach will get you the best result. Yes, I'm sure you're right. Good Thank luck you. to you, Mr. Thanks. Police detective. That was a stupid mistake. Don't let it happen again. So what'd you do? Run for mayor or something? Well, they put my picture in the paper a couple of times. And she recognized you from that? Yes, so. Well, I guess we can scratch them off the list. Oh, no, we don't rule anybody out who has that good a memory for the face of a cop. Right now, I gotta meet Pearl at the Hollow Records. She's compiling a list of all the recent adoptions. Okay, and I'll go back to the office. You wanna meet back in Johnny's? A couple hours? Okay. I uh, think we should give Brick a progress report. 
Oh, yeah, that's, that's great. Just too bad we're not making any progress. That's okay, Cruz. I'm making progress. Hello? You're right where you're supposed to be. And you're late. Where are you? I'm right where I'm supposed to be with our friends, Jeffrey and Keller. When did they arrive? About an hour ago. I'm looking at their van right now. I could rig an explosion that would blow them away when they started. No. I thought you wanted them both aware. Don't try to think. You just listen to me and you do what I tell you to do. I'm listening. Do not harm Jeffrey Conrad under any circumstances. Do you hear me? What? Only the Capwell girl? Well, that should be easy. They're never apart. Well, I'm not paying you so much money because it's easy. If you want that money, you'll find a way to do it and you will make it look like an accident. Picky broad. You know that? Yes. And if I were you, I wouldn't want me as an enemy. How'd it go? Got them all lined up. C.C. Capwell, the third. Are you completely out of your mind? Don't you know that C.C. Capwell would send out an army if his heir was ever taken? I mean, I, I don't know. You may have some secret desire to go to prison. I don't. Nobody's going to prison. The Capwell daddy is out of town, and I know the mother, and she is so deep in postpartum blues that she's not going to know what hit her. We cannot afford to take a chance right we now. We always take chances. Yeah, well, there was a cop here today. Actually, he's an ex-cop now, Cruz Castillo. What was he doing here? He was here with this woman who supposedly wanted to adopt a kid, but she's single. Now, he said he was here to help her, so they posed as a couple under an alias. But why was he here? Because he's running a private detective agency now, and he also happens to be a very good friend of Brick Wallace. So you just think he's checking out the Wallace kid's disappearance, right? Well, isn't that obvious? <sighs> okay. That's all the more reason we have to take the Capwell kid tonight. No, we just can't afford to take the risk. We can't afford to pass it up. Look, if this Castillo guy is on to us, we're going to have to split and soon. And I don't feel like passing up a quick score like this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Isn't this the woman you were telling me about? The one that you used to be friends with? Right, right. Victoria Lane. So yeah. what? Oh, you know, you're so dead set on this. I mean... It, you know, it, it seems like, like you've got something against her. Oh, come on, Marcia. This is business. Strictly business. Now, look, how many chances do we have to pick up on a blonde, blue-eyed baby boy that's two months old, huh? You know what kind of bundle we could get for the kid? You know that. I do know this couple. They pay a fortune for a little baby boy like that. Okay, all right. Good. You won't be sorry. Yeah. We just have to get the right courier to deliver the baby. Hi, right, what about Dora? Dora? <sighs> Darling, it has to be somebody special. Somebody that is blind to everything except the color of green. Hi. I hope I'm not coming at a bad time. Uh, can I uh, help you? Well, I. my name is Gina DeMott, and I'm looking for a job. Oh. Well, uh, who referred you to us? Was it a, an employment agency? Oh, no, I'm just going around door to door seeing if anybody wants to hire me. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you the truth, I'd really rather be shopping. And then why are you here looking for a job? Well, I promised somebody that I'd go out and look for work. You know how that is. You know, it's like, well, are about the work ethic. <laughs> so I'm doing it, you know, so I can say that I kept my promise. And, no, well, I can't help it if there's any work, can I? <laughs> I'll see you later. I'm going shopping. Bye. Well, that's an interesting philosophy. Yeah, she's certainly upfront about it, isn't she? A garden variety bimbo who cares about nothing but. Well, don't you stand there? Go get her before she leaves the building. No, no. I just uh, wanted to call and make sure you and the baby were okay. Yeah. All right, well, give Chip a big hug from his Aunt Kelly, okay? Bye, Victoria. What'd she say? Well, apparently she's spoken to Mason a couple of times. When? Well, this afternoon was the last time. Oh, that's great. That's it, then. Yeah, you huh? no, no. I was relieved in the beginning. Listen to this. He was very evasive about where he was. He didn't leave a phone number where he could be reached, and he ended the calls very quickly. Yeah, but I mean, at least we know he's all right. 
Why would he not leave a number? I don't know. That's weird. I mean, ending the calls quickly, not leaving an... Do you think it's too far-fetched that his, his calls are being monitored, you know, controlled by someone else? What do you mean? By, by the person that yeah, he met yes, here? Yeah, possible. Why? I mean, Jeffy, there wasn't a ransom demand, nothing. What would they want? Why would they let him call his wife? I don't know. I don't know. There's no way I can answer those questions, Kelly. Well, let's go. Come on. Hey, no, no. Just listen to me. You're right. You're right about being so determined to find him. I just hope you realize that I am as well. Hmm? I'm with you all the way on this. No matter what happens. I love you. Time to hit the road, eh? Six places to check. They're 50 miles from here. We can do it in an hour. Hey, you look exhausted, baby. I'm not exhausted. I, I know you haven't been sleeping well. You hardly ate anything at lunch. Now, do me a favor. Just take a nap and have something to eat, Jeffrey, okay? Jeffrey, by it, then it's going it, to be it, too late. Bars stay open late. Now, just take a break, all right? Actually, I would kill for 10 minutes and a half shower. <laughs> well, murder will not be necessary, madam. And after that, we can have a nice, cozy dinner for two. How about that? Hmm? You win. Yeah? Hey, well, that's a first. I mean, you're actually agreeing to do something. Don't push it, buddy. I wouldn't dream of it. Here at the showers, I'll go get dinner. And we'll check the bars that we haven't checked? If that's what you want, that's exactly what we'll do. Thanks. cash yet. I was delivered after the bank's closed. Oh, that's good, because I was having a meeting with my accountant, and he told me that you were underpaid. So what I'd like you to do is just tear up that check, and we'll send you a new one with the correct amount. What? How incredibly honest of you. I you know, probably wouldn't have noticed it. What's with this camera? Oh, it's it belongs to my brother. I have to return it to him tonight. It's like very complicated. I mean, the kind of cameras I like are kind of as... Uh... <laughs> disposable ones, you know? That way, oh, if they're yeah. stolen, you're going to throw them away anyway. Yeah, well, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah. Anyway, that check will be in the mail. Good night, Mr. Timmons. Good night. 
Well, Jane, oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Why would you expect to? Well, I, you know, now that you're on break, I thought maybe you'd uh, you know, want to come over and intern over at the office. About what what, what grade did you get on that uh, interview you did with me? I got an A. Gee, how do you figure Yeah, well, the title of the paper was Public Official, One Monster Behind the Net. Catchy. So how about it? About what? Come in to my office, see uh, the nuts and bolts of the district attorney's office. Come on, I got free time tonight. You're well, I don't. Life. So you can keep your nuts and your bolts to yourself, okay? Uh, I'm just here to see Cruz. Still, wow, yeah, if I would get you ten, old James Bond over there is waiting for pussy galore. See? I told you. I just got a nose for these things. I wouldn't horn in on that duel if I were... Well, I'd rather do anything than stand here and talk to you. So. I don't know. I don't know. The coroner said that could not be determined. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I don't see I have any choice. I mean, thank goodness Harrelson... Harrelson's got the department. He's going to let me take care of it myself. I'm, I figure it's better than having two uniforms show up at Brick's door. Something wrong? Do you know where Brick is? No, I just got here. What is it? Well, I need to talk to him, Jane. About what, Cruz? Is this about Johnny? Um, Cruz, tell well, me. Well, a, a buddy of mine from the department called. <clears throat> they got a report from the morgue about a little boy who matches Johnny's description. Mm -hmm. Well, hello. I've been waiting here for you for an hour. Oh, you have something better to do? Where you been? I went to Toddlers Incorporated, just like you asked me to. Does it look like it's on the up and up to you? There's no question about it. I told you you had nothing to worry about. Who'd you speak to? Some woman named Marcia and a guy named Paul. <laughs> the only reason I went over there was because you said you'd split your future commissions with me. That's but they're very nice. You were there all this time? Yeah. They wanted to talk to me, get to know me better. You didn't tell them about me. Yeah, oh yeah, it was the first thing out of my mouth. I, I walked in and I said, I'm here to investigate you for my district attorney boyfriend. Uh, you think I'm a total idiot? No, not total. They wanted to know about me, about my, my values and my attitude about life. <laughs> values and you like bargains. Good. You know, we did talk about shopping a little bit. I told them how important it is to me and how it's kind of therapeutic, you know, almost like exercise. They were very understanding and quite decisive. Decisive of how? Well, they hired me in the first five minutes. Oh, go no, this is worse than That's five. not I don't funny, Keith. Where's the problem? I got the job, and I don't want to hear any complaints from you if I have to get up and work tonight. Why would you have to work tonight? Oh, well, I'm on standby. I, I might have to fly out one of the babies tonight. Matt, what? You, take a, deliver a baby tonight? Why would they do that? I don't know. Maybe the person they had lined up, uh, maybe their grandmother died and uh, they can't decide whether to go to the funeral or not. <laughs> That's what he said, right? No, but it could happen. These things do happen, you know. I'm not a detail person. Yeah, you tell me about it. I don't know what you're griping about. I did what you said. I got the job. Doesn't this sound fishy to you? People delivering babies in the middle of the night. I don't want Come to hear on. They're paying me a lot of money, Keith, and I intend to spend every cent of it. You see, the adopted parents live in New York, right near Bloomingdale. You look smashing. Thank you. I can't believe you're the same woman I saw earlier. Makeup can do wonders. No, I think it's motherhood that becomes you. <laughs> All right, look, I'm going to set up here. I think we're going to get some great shots today. Okay, I'll get the baby. He Good. seems to be in a better mood than he was earlier. Terrific. Me. Are you ready? All right, listen, I'm going to need 20 minutes, and I want you to come up. Fourth floor, apartment 412. I want you to wait outside, okay? I'll hand you the kid. I'll handle the mother. Well, here we are. I guess we're as ready as we'll ever be. Are you kidding? You looks like a million bucks.
Look, Brett, if you don't want to go through with this, I'm sure I can get somebody else. No, no, I'm the father. I want to see him first. All right, well, uh, then I guess, uh, I guess we can get it over with if you're ready. I'm sorry, I'll go if you want me to, but I just didn't think you should go through this alone. No, I'm glad you're here. <clears throat> Let's do it. It isn't Johnny. <clears throat> for you to be here either. I, mean, I don't understand. I thought you'd be relieved. I am. I'm relieved. It was the first thing I felt when I saw the little boy's body. I'm standing there and I'm looking at a dead child and I'm thinking I'm how glad I am it's not Johnny. You can't help feel that way. Johnny's your son. And that doesn't mean you don't feel badly for that other child. That's right, and his parents are somewhere right now feeling that same desperation that I'm feeling all over again. And they're gripping on to that hope that I have. Maybe in some other town or some other state. And maybe they're in some morgue right now looking at a body that's Johnny, and they're Please, saying, I'm don't... sorry, I can't, I'm looking at a body right now. And it used to be a little boy. What do you want from me? I mean, I don't know what I'm feeling anymore. What do you, what do you think? Listen, I can't think about anything else. All I want is him back. That's the only thing I can deal with right now. Will you please understand that? Okay, good. Great. Okay, let's get a few more. Oh, boy. What? Chip, I think you better tell your mom to check her eye makeup. What's the matter? Is it smearing? Yep. You know, oh. we had perfection going here, Victoria. Oh. I think with a little touch-up, we may be able to get it back. Okay, well, I won't be a minute. Okay. Okay. Won't you manage better if you had a free hand there? Um, yeah, I guess. Okay. Um, maybe I'm being overly protective. Yeah. Um, do, do you mind? No? Okay, well, oh, you be, you be a good boy, very fast. Yeah, Chip. shower gave you back that voracious appetite of yours. Hmm? The shower isn't what made me feel better. It was you. Oh, yeah? How did I manage that? By taking care of me. Even when I fight you, you manage to take care of me, you know it. Thank you. Hey, I don't know. You needn't thank me. I love you. I'm only doing what you've done for me time and time again. Now, if I can make a bad time good for you, and I'm happy, see? Mm -hmm. Hey, heck, you're just tired. You're a little bit scared. And I promise you, everything is going to be all right. Okay? Now, come. You best get your hair dry before dinner. No, it'll dry by itself. Hey, hey, I'm not having you dying of pneumonia on me. Now, come on. It gets cold around here at night. Uh, Off you go. Yes, Bubble. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if there's any hope at all in a world where that kind of thing can happen to a little kid. 
I've seen it before, but you never do get used to it. It got you too, didn't it? Uh, seeing that little boy's body brought back some bad memories for me. Memories of what? My own child. My child was killed. When it was happening, I wanted to die. In fact, I thought that I was going to because I couldn't feel anything. Nothing at all. I know something about what you're going through right now, Cruz. And I know that you'll never be able to forget Eden. But you have to find a way to live again. And you're not alone. You have a friend. I'm Tom Brokaw. In today's complicated world, you need good reasons to make the best choice of the news you watch. At NBC Nightly News, we believe you should get the facts easily. We think you deserve to understand the day's events clearly. We have to earn your confidence by examining the issues fairly. That's why at NBC Nightly News, we cover the world with you in mind.